Awesome. I'll try not to say anything embarrassing. Oh, and then oh, uh, this, <laughs> this is one of uh, the painted ladies in Charleston, South Carolina. So that is some of the variety of, uh, of, of the watercolors. And some people say watercolor is very difficult. I've never done anything else. It is different than acrylics and oils. So a few of the things that make it different is with watercolor, you lay down your lightest color first. In oils, you, in acrylics, you typically put your dark colors down first. So um, I've always found it's much easier to do than to talk about it. So um, I wanted to show you some of the different kinds of colors and then we'll use them. So here is a little palette that I use when I travel and they have little cubes that you can buy of color and they just fit right in there and you can change them out. Um, I use a tubes, they come in different sizes um, and different colors and some of them can be very expensive. The difference between an inexpensive and an expensive a uh, watercolor tube is typically the concentration of the pigment that's inside. For example, Windsor Newton, yeah, they're sold at Hobby Lobby, also online. It's uh, probably at the high end. And then there's the Hobby Lobby brand called Artist Touch. And uh, I don't know if you can see this. I paid $6.99 for this large tube at Hobby Lobby. And this small tube, about half the size or a third of the size, I paid $9 for at Hobby Lobby. And the difference is the concentration of pigment. So uh, if you get to using a particular one, just keep in mind if you switch the concentration might be different in it. So you might, it might look different as you paint. Um, so this is my palette. Uh, I started with just uh, nine colors. Um, and as you can tell, I mix primarily on my palette, but you don't have to. So you could use a paper plate or a saucer to mix before you put it on your, on your paper. And if you've never used, a, you're using a color that you haven't used before, I always have a scrap piece of watercolor paper handy that I can experiment with. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is some techniques. One of my favorite brushes is a rounded number four brush. And so two of the techniques is wet on wet and wet on dry. So I'm gonna show you this and you can follow along. We'll do this as, as we go along and I hope that shows up pretty good. So wet on wet is where you take your brush in the water and you put the water where you want the color to be. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a fan here, like a flower. So I've made, you can't see that probably, but there's three little stripes. So then I'm <clears throat> going to my color, I've wet my brush and I just rub in that and then put it on my palette and then come to the, where it's wet and I touch it. And as you can see, hopefully as soon as I touched it, the water jumped out of the brush and onto the paper. 
the first time you wet, see, I'm, I'm using my cry towel now. The first time you wet, you may, depending on your paper, you may have to do it again. So I'll put another stripe there and I'll go to my palette. Rub a little on there, touch my palette, and so you can see, hopefully, that the water moves, and you can rotate this and help the color flow in a direction. So why don't you guys try that? So let's, I just was trying to make a, a flower petal here. So here, just put plenty of water so you can see it. Hold a little color up and then touch that where the water is. And see what you get the feel of what's happening. And that's wet color on wet water. Does anybody have any questions? Are they surprised at what happened there? So you can play around with it. So if you wanted to make a shape So here I'm touching it and where the water is and the blue is just flowing down. And then you can manipulate that if you like. If you have the first time you're using your colors, you may have to use your brush with water on it and sort of get it loosened up a little bit. There might be a little film on there. Typically, you wouldn't do a watercolor that is tilted at this steep angle. You would want to use it flat, mostly flat. A lot of people like to tape their piece of watercolor to a, a stiff board or a piece of cardboard so that they can keep it off sort of flat at a shallow angle and then move to help the water move along. I'll, I'll, I'll do more with that later. Anybody have any questions about wet on wet? Have you had a good experience with wet on wet? Hey, John, we just had a couple of people join. So if you can just really quickly go over the, the wet on wet versus dry sure. again, I think that'd be great. Surely. So with watercolor, there's two techniques of putting the water, putting the color and the water together on paper. The first technique is wet on wet. And that is where you take your brush and you put the water on the brush where you want the color to be. So I'm gonna draw just a little line here and make sure it's pretty wet. You can look at it at an angle to make, to see that the water is there. Then, <clears throat> I'll wet my brush again and go to my color and dig in. Where am I? There I am. Dig into the color and get some color on your brush and dab it a little bit on your palette and then go back and put the color there. And you can see how the color spreads out. And we can manipulate that, which we'll learn a little later here to do this evening. So that's the wet on the wet technique. And you, while it's wet, you can 
If you want to take some of the color off, you can do that by drying your brush in your crying towel. Just dry it and then lightly go across the bottom and you can pick up some of that color. Do we have any questions about the wet on wet? Everybody's tried it and it, it watercolor is a fun. It's not, it's like any art. It's art is in the eye of the beholder. And so what you have in your mind's eye or a photograph that you're trying to do should show up on the paper in some version. And if we all did one, if we all 25 of us did one, which we'll be doing next week, it'll all turn out different and they'll all be fabulous. The Metropolitan Museum of Art will be coming for each of us. So this, the next technique other than wet on wet. Yeah, Jessica is, has a question. Do you yeah. wet the paper first for wet on wet? You, you wet the paper only where you want the color to be. Only where you want the color to be. So as we go on, we, we'll do a sunset here in just a few minutes, but I wanna make sure that you experience at least these two techniques, which make up 99% of the of watercolor techniques. So you wet, the paper first. And the papers will be different. Um, so there's 140 pound and 300 pound are the two most prevalent. And the 300 pound, of course, is very stiff. And it might take a little more water to, to dampen the, uh, the paper. That's 140. We've got the 300. Okay, so that's good to know uh, because it might take a little more water and it might take a little more time to absorb uh, the water, but, and it may take a little more time to dry. And one technique to know if it's dry is using the back of your hand. So if you touch your watercolor, you think it's dry, you touch it and it feels cool, it's still wet. If you don't feel any coolness, then it's it's dry enough for you to move on without the color that you're putting on there bleeding into it. Okay, any further questions I was trying to see here? Thanks for helping me uh, control, uh, keep an eye on the, uh, the chats. You bet. So the next technique is called wet on dry, wet color on dry paper. So as you've seen on this last one, when I put it on there, the color spread out and that's wet on wet. So this is, you do not wet the paper. You just wet your brush, get some color on, on the brush and put it on there and notice what happens or what doesn't happen. Whoops, I didn't show you. It doesn't spread out. It's like a crayon, it's like a marker. It does spread out just a touch from the water and the color, but you can make very fine lines, very distinct colors, if this flower that I was starting with over here, if I wanna put some dots in there, some stamen, I can just put the dots there and they'll stay there, they won't bleed. And only where the water was still damp. So those are the techniques, very different. There's the wet on wet. And just below it is the wet on dry. You use the wet on dry for very detailed, very detailed pieces that you want. 
if you want a, a very sharp image of something, then you would use the wet on dry. Otherwise, most everything else is done wet on wet. During the week, try to experiment with how much color. It'll be very enlightening for you to see how much color on, this, on the same piece of paper and water that you can have. So you can add a lot of color or you can make it very pale. One thing with watercolor is it's going to dry a little lighter than it looks when it's wet. So keep that in mind. Okay, we, we've got a raised hand. Did you have a question? Person with the iPad. Okay, we're gonna assume not. Okay, okay. So again, I think if everybody has something, um, what I'd like us to do in order to get the feel of this wet on wet and wet on dry is <clears throat> let's do a sunset or a sunrise. So <clears throat> our kits came with little sponges. If this, if that's something that would be helpful. I think everybody has one. A sponge, okay. So um, what I've got here is, I think what I've got here, if I can figure out, okay, there we go, is this is a, a five by seven piece of watercolor paper. And when you work on that piece of cardboard or this is a very thin veneer, uh, people like to tape it down so that they can move it. And there's two ways to do that. This green tape is a sharp edge. I have about a quarter of an inch under here. So when I pull the tape up after I finish this, there'll be a sharp edge. The other method, is, which is the blue tape, is just tape it it down in spots and you paint to the edge or whatever you you feel like you want to do. So to do a uh, a sunrise or sunset, if you take a pencil and very lightly about a third of the way up from the bottom draw your horizon line and it doesn't have to be real straight just give yourself a very light line to work with the above is going to be the sky and the below will be the, the land so in watercolor we put the lightest color down first. So in your mind, think about what color you want in there. So you can use a smaller piece or the whole size. So the first thing you, we want to do is wet all this surface above the line. So just you can use a big brush or it just takes a little longer with a small brush, but, and just have fun painting water on your paper. And remember, if you go from top to bottom, the part at the top may dry out a little bit and we might have to come back and do that. Add more water at the top. So just have fun putting that water on there and think about the colors you want your sunset. 
So when you get to the line, it doesn't have to be real accurate. Just give yourself a little bit. I would tell you what colors I'm using, but you might not have them. So I'm just gonna use general colors. So I want my sunset to be a little pink. So I'm going to add a color called permanent rose. So I'm gonna to go to my palette and dig into that with my brush. And where I want the permanent rose, I'm just gonna start adding color on here. And you can see, as I come across, it's getting lighter. If I want to have it all the same color, then I have to go back and add some. But I'm just going to leave it like that at the moment. Now, I don't necessarily like the way I did that uh, now that I see it. So I can move the color by putting a little water right below it. And you can see that the color is fading down into it. So I can do the same thing over here where it's light. And so the color is is sinking down, it's fading down. And you can come back and help it by using your wet brush and pulling it down into the water if it's not going fast enough for you. So you can, if you notice also that there is some drying out of the paper. So you want to go ahead and add a little more water. Keep your paper nice and, and wet. Now what happens if you get too much water? It's not a rhetorical question. So, so you dry your brush and right where the water is collecting, you can run your dry brush along and it'll pick up that water. If you don't get it all, you can come back and pick it up, dry your, dry your brush and you'll end up with the line right there. So what other colors do you want in your sunset? So, you know, we've got the, the, uh, the permanent rose or the pinky color going on here. So while it's wet, you can wet your brush and manipulate the color that you have in there so that it, it doesn't have any hard edge, which hard edges are very sharp. So you want that to fade in there. So just add, add more water over it. So you wanna pull this out a little bit, just pull this out a little bit by adding water. I have several yellows that I use one of them that's my favorite is called New Gamboge. So while it's still wet, we can put that in here. And this might be where the sun is coming up. This might be where the sun is starting to come up here. trying to keep an eye on the, uh, the good old clock here. So 
So if you wanted to add more color, then wet your brush and go back to your new gamboge color and add some more color in there so that we can see that glow of the sun coming up. And then we probably want to feather this out. So we add a little more water at the edges. All right, any, any questions uh, as we're moving along? Looks like it's a cloudy day with the red coming up there. It must be October, the harvest is going on. So <clears throat> white clouds aren't really white. There, there are some shades of blue. One of the colors that I like to use for white is called cerulean. Cerulean blue. So I'm going to add a little cerulean blue in here. And then come back with a wet brush and just smooth that out. Now you know that blue and pink, or blue and red could make purple. So we might see some purple showing up in here where these colors sort of come together. Purple is our disease color, so everybody always loves purple. All right, well, we have it. In fact, uh, what, what's the hour? Okay, we still have a few minutes here. So the nice things about cloud is there's no right or wrong. It's clouds, they're all different. Yeah, that's turning purple over here. Woo. Okay, so we have some clouds. We have the red side. What is that old saying? Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. Hopefully red sky in the evening. Sailor's delight, that doesn't rhyme, but I think I'm gonna put a little more pink in here, right up in here. All right. So we've used the wet on wet technique here in the top. So on the bottom, I want to use a little bit of the dry technique. So the wet on the dry. So what might be down here, some of this, I'm going to touch this. It still feels damp, it still feels cool. So it's not dry yet. So I'm going to work a little below and then as it dries, we'll work. So typically sunset, we'll see um, some trees. So I'm going to use a little bit of a color called hooker's green. It's, it's a fairly common color. It's a very bright color. So I have not wetted my paper. I just have the green on my brush. So what kind of tree do we want? Mm. 
Maybe we're in the mountains, we'll have a pine tree. There's my pine tree. Look, I'm looking at it sideways. So. Mine looks like a Christmas tree that got run over by a car. Oh, okay. One of those modern ones. So one of the things that is nice about watercolor is uh, people say you can't erase it. Well, you, you really can. Uh, so the, the way that you can do this is just continue to add a little water and pull that down. I'm using the dry. And remember a tree is always lighter at the top than it is at the bottom. and out on the edges. So there's a tree. As it's wet, the tree isn't always one color. It's always dark. So make a dark green by mixing a red and a green together and uh, didn't pick up enough. So a tree is usually has some shadows on the inside and around the base. So <clears throat> we could add colors in there to give some perspective to our sunrise. Uh, we could do a beach. Don't usually find a tree where uh, you, you could put in here whatever uh, scenery that you would want. I usually work from a photograph and put my own little touch on it. So is there any questions here about that? I, I wanted to do one other thing here. Uh, with the dry, um, so maybe maybe we're on a deck. So uh, put a, some kind of railing, wooden deck. So the, the, the dry, the wet color on the dry is, almost like using a, a marker to paint what you want, put it there. I wanna leave a little time for uh, any questions, but also help you get started on the butterfly which uh, I have not sent those out yet. Okay, well, I'll show you what I have. And then uh, it was just an example. And uh, okay, so there's the start uh, maybe of a, Got a broken fence here, leading out to a pathway. Uh, 
Now you can use the wet on wet technique down here by wetting this surface. I'll just do a small spot here. You don't touch where we've just painted. We don't want it to bleed. So we just put the water there and then I'm gonna put some green grass. Just blob it in there. And this will be beginnings of uh, My, my dark isn't quite dark enough yet. Okay, it's the beginning of some grass and we could put a little flower in there. So, <clears throat> that's the beginnings. I hope everybody got a feel for what the water can do. And I encourage you over the next week to go ahead and do another sunrise or sunset because it gives you the feel of what's going to happen to the colors. And then also to experiment, uh, try different amounts of color on your water and different amounts of water as well uh, to give you the look that you need. Now I'll finish working on my sunset here um, over the next week. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, Tracy has some butterflies that I had sent out just just an example of and you could have your own butterfly but I wanted to, sh to show you how to get this on your watercolor paper so there's a couple of, of techniques uh, to do that one is to actually cut out the shape, cut the shape out with scissors and trace it very lightly with a pencil uh, on your watercolor paper. Uh, you can use an eraser if the, the tracing is too dark and your colors are gonna be lighter. You don't want to necessarily see the lines. Another way is on the back, Use a, a soft leaded pencil and color over the whole back with the leaded pencil. And then come over that shape with a pencil or pen on the front. And that carbon that you've laid down from the pencil will transfer to your paper. The third technique is to use some kind of carbon paper. Uh, regular old simple carbon paper works beautifully. Um, you just have to be careful sometimes where you touch, but you can erase if you get a smudge of carbon on there, you can erase it off. Uh, so an art supply store has rolls of carbon paper or sheets and it's fairly inexpensive. Or if, like I don't always have carbon paper, I use a pencil and rub it behind it and then transfer it that way. The fourth way is to draw it freehand. Use a very light touch with a pencil. A number two pencil works very good to trace, to draw out a, um, whatever you, it is that you want. So you can see some of the intricate drawings that I did. What I did is I took a photograph of this and then I put carbon paper behind it and I trace out then the shape, the major shapes that I wanted to, uh, to have part of that watercolor. And then with 
using that photograph as a guide, then I could add some of the finer details later on. So I would find a butterfly. Next week, we'll paint a butterfly. I've dropped those three images that you sent me into the chat window. So if you guys just scroll up, you'll see butterflies one, two, and three, and you can just open those and download them. Yeah. Um, the, the side view of the butterfly may not print off. I had trouble with that one. Uh, but the, the, uh, the purple one uh, printed beautifully and you could use that as a guide if you wanted to. Uh, and this one is a little looser. This butterfly is a little looser than the purple one. So uh, challenge yourself on that. So we have a few minutes. I wanna make sure we have any questions. Um, does anybody want to show your work? Yeah, let's see. Let's see any work. Oh, oh hey, very nice, Tracy. Oh my gosh. My, my tree is the wrong scale, but I well, you know what? You can make it bigger. You can go make it bigger when it dries. Why can I? Yes, you can. That's the watercolor is amazing. All right, come on, Carla. What you got? Whoa. Oh. Nice, and Beth, Beth is showing hers, nice. Oh, look at that. Yes, see, they're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. Rhonda, Rhonda Sky is gorgeous, and Kelly. Mm -hmm. Look at you guys, Mary Jo and Maggie. Isn't this fun? Watercolor is, is fun, and it, uh, I'll sit down and to just work, you know, half an hour, and the next thing I know, two hours has gone by. So it, it's it's something that you just you can get into, and uh, I suggest you look at photographs, and you can print a photograph, and you can take it to FedEx or someplace and have it blow it up to, or make it small to whatever size. They've got copiers that do that, and it's very fairly inexpensive to make it. I've made a photograph. Uh, as large uh, to make a, a 32 by 28 watercolor. And I've made them small to make uh, a five by seven. So if you have a favorite flower or watercolor um, or building, some scene, I, I suggest you, you try that and just uh, see what happens. Uh, it, uh, I, I started out with flowers and have uh, because uh, Susan, my wife, is very into historic preservation. I've gotten into buildings. And, uh, but I, I take it a little too far, this, this brick work was uh, something. Uh, but I've also done some amazing roofs uh, <laughs> uh, as well. And because watercolor, I was going to get this one. It, it, it can be very soft. So here is a lake scene. And, and you can see that it's very soft. It's sort of like the uh, using the water to make it float. That looks like some of uh, uh, Bob Ross's happy little trees. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten to the Bob Rossi uh, technique yet, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I, have, I do watch him every now and then. It's amazing what he does. Well, got a question. What is the tracing paper called again? Carbon paper. Carbon paper. Yeah, you can get tracing paper, uh, which is some kind called scrap paper, and you can lay it over a photograph and and copy what you want, and then put the carbon paper behind that. Um, there, there's a lot of ways to get what you want onto a, a piece of um, watercolor paper. So and the ones that I've seen are amazing. Um, what, what I've what you've done, and so you're well on the way of becoming 
accomplished watercolorists. Yay. Well, I, I will tell you guys, they have a whole section. If you have a Michaels in your town, they have a whole section of stuff. Just set yourself a budget before you go in there or you, you, know, yes. you will spend your grocery money at Michaels, but they've got all kinds of different, different things yeah. there. And, and like, I think I got a set of three really big brushes and it was like $5 or something. So and they have whole sets of, uh, I have uh, a set of, of brushes here. And uh, I think the most expensive brush uh, in there, it was $3.99. Um, there's some places online, Dick Blick is one, Hobby Lobby. Uh, sometimes they have sales. They each have sections for watercolors and watercolor papers. And, and they also, uh, Hobby Lobby does matting while you wait. And there's square brushes, round. There's no right brush, just whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, is what works. If you guys just scroll up in the chat, you can see the butterflies. Somebody asked about that. So next week, if you come prepared with your butterfly on your uh, watercolor, I will try to review what we've done today. And then each of you may want to be, do something different. So what we might do is visit each one of you as, as we go along over that time. I won't be doing it, you'll be doing it. But I'll be here to uh, guide you and answer any questions. And maybe we could get through once or twice as you work on that. Um, um, I, yeah, I, I, can, I can see myself just taking a piece of paper and wasting it. Yeah. But, but trying different amounts of water, different yeah. sizes of patches of water and everything. I mean, it, it's just a... Um, completely different mindset for those of us who have painted acrylic or oil before because instead of layering on you don't put anything down unless you mean for it to be there <laughs> well there uh, there are some techniques to erase on watercolors and one of them is you it's called a scrub brush <laughs> yeah. rolling gum rolling gum yes Draw, drawing gum it uh you, you paint it on there and then you peel it off. Ah, awesome. I, I did not keep myself in check at Michael's. No. <laughs> well, you have some things that I don't have. I'll be curious to see how that works. I've always used a scrub brush uh -huh. and a scrub brush comes in different sizes. Usually they're a set of three or four, but it's a very short, stiff brush. So you wet the area, you let it set, and then you lightly rub. You have to be careful that you don't rub through the paper, but you pretty much erase a thin layer of the paper. Um, I use it when I've made a mistake, such as put way too much color. And so I lighten it, use it to lighten it. Mm. Any other questions we have, ladies? Uh -huh. That's a fine type of brush. I'm sorry, Ron, I didn't realize that there was a gentleman amongst us. I thought it was all ladies. It's Judith. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> okay. So um, the very smallest brush would be used to add fine details. Let me get one of mine here. Uh, this is a number one brush. I can almost count the hairs in there. But so if we wanted to go back to the fence, let's say, let me go back to the fence here and add 
a detail, then I would use the very fine brush to put wood grain in here. So it adds another layer of detail. I don't know if you're able to see that or not, but it a fine brush like this is to add very fine detail at the end to give your painting a little more life. Life will come to your paintings by adding shadows and color. So if you're not happy with your pine tree, add a little really dark green or black to the middle of it in a few spots and it'll come alive. If your fence is too one dimensional, it doesn't have any character, add a little black or dark colors, make a knot hole. Um, and that's where I use a photograph to help guide me for details uh, when you see that. Thank you. Certainly. I just don't want to do anything else. Let's, yeah. Jessica, you got to show it. Where are you? What am I not Jessica, showing? Oh, there you are. Am Look I at not, that. Can you not oh, see me? That is awesome. Wow, your clouds are so soft. Love is it. Is that a sunrise or sunset? I was thinking sunset because I'm never up at sunrise. Oh, well then it's a it's a sunset. So yeah, it's October. You have that orangey, uh, uh, pinky. Man, it looks great. Good job. Let's Thank see. you. Who else can we pick on? T. <laughs> Turn that camera on, lady. <laughs> Come on. Well, there is no, there is no bad art. There's no wrong art. There she is. Let's see. There you are. Okay. Let's, let's see what you got there. Can you hear us? Doesn't look like she can hear us. Are, are you talking to me, Tracy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you want to see your oh, well, I got kicked out, so my painting oh, is not no. complete. Oh, no. <laughs> but I, I promise I'll finish it and share it next time. Okay. okay. Let's see who, who else wants I, to I can tell you're a pe person of color because of the orange there behind you. That's, well, that's brilliant color. That's nice. It's actually red, but the lighting in the room makes it look orange. Oh, okay. My son goes to UT, but I'm not a ball fan. Just well, a lady ball fan. Yeah. <laughs> We, we understand. We understand. <laughs> Let's see. Jessica G, you want to show us your, I can't remember who showed some work and who didn't. There's your little cutie pie. You've got some, you've got an assistant artist with uh, like uh, Rhonda does. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh nice. Oh, look at that. Wow. Very nice. Woo. Okay. Now you, I want to see that framed. You're going to frame that, right? Put it over the mantle. Uh, Jessica Azrin asks how she does grass without messing up her tree. Well, you make sure the tree is dry and you put the water next to the tree, not on the tree and it won't, won't mess it up. Experiment with that before you do that so you know how close to get. You can get pretty close. The water won't go, the color will go where the water is. Nice. And I took your advice. I did, I was able to make my tree bigger with uh, just doing some. Right, just adding to it, yeah. adding to it. You can layer watercolor and still see the underneath because watercolor are translucent. And so then you can continue to build on the colors. Uh, if we, we didn't get into mixing colors tonight or making a new color, but you can do that on your palette 
Oh, did you do one too? Awesome. Look at you. Wow. Yes, that is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. So Y'all can tell awesome. John's a grandpa, right? I beg your pardon. I said, yes. we can tell you're a grandpa. Oh, yes. <laughs> So we can uh, also mix the colors on the paper by having the paper uh, fairly wet, putting down the colors you want, and then letting them bleed together. Um, oh. That's a little more translucent that way, and you get a little more depth of color uh, when you do it on the paper. But it's a little trickier at the same time because you don't know exactly what's going to show up unless you've already pre-tested uh, on, a, on a scrap piece of, uh, of watercolor paper. Further questions, ladies? Let's see. Anybody else have anything? Sorry, I'm, I'm squinting like a Boston Terrier <laughs> trying to read, but... Uh... Well, watercolor is great. We've done it with uh, our grandchildren from ages uh, four or five. Uh, I've got several around the house that they've done. Oh, yeah. And uh, I encourage you to look at your photographs, pictures in the paper, magazines, and, uh, and do that. And we've done furniture. Uh, I've helped students at the Elmore College of Design at Belmont, uh, watercolor furniture and sofa and draperies. Uh, to snazzy up the, their their artwork for projects, so um, cool. It's very flexible. Uh, Tracy, you're into this. You've got your head down, just working away there. Here's here's the thing about this. I like doing, and I find the like the adult coloring books very relaxing. But you kind of have to be able to see that. So I got to like adjust my bifocals to the right place. I don't really have to be able to see this. <laughs> because there's, there's no detail in it. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. Right. Well, there's a lot of, of different things you can do with watercolor. And you know, once you get it down. Oh, look, somebody, you... Jessica's done a butterfly. Oh, wow. So like you could, I had this wet and it was all one color and I took a dry brush and ripped it through there and made sun rays. Look at that. That is awesome. What? And a nice flower as well. We've got our overachievers, I'm telling you. I tell you what. Love it. Well, look at that. The watercolor matches her blouse. This is awesome. Does anybody else want to show and tell? Beth, you showed yours. Do you have any questions? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Hey, Kelly, you going to show us anything? <laughs> oh, nice. You put mountains in there. Very nice. You've been to the Smokies. That's a sunset at the, in the Smoky Mountains there with the mountains in there. Yeah. Hey, Jasmine, you got something? Thank you for sharing. There we go. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Let me look at you. Wow. Look at that. Ooh, that is nice. Great job on that. Uh, wow. Who else has got something? Mary Jo, you got all a soft clouds. That's beautiful. I like your tree too. Nice. Look at that. All right, you guys are awesome. I still hadn't found those butterflies. I think I'm stupid or something with this computer. <laughs> I'll get them later off of the you Facebook. Know what? Or something. I, I, I'm going to send them. Um, I'm going to do it again right now. Okay. And you guys can just see it. It'll be at the bottom. Okay. I'm having the same problem. I don't see them either. Okay, hold on. All right, hold on. All right, do you see it now where it says butterfly one? The last thing on the chat I see is what about using charcoal to sketch with? That's uh -oh. what I see. 
Okay. Charcoal. Um, I, I have not used charcoal, uh, but I think you'd have to be uh, careful. Uh, it, it will bleed with the water and the colors. So you, you, you'd want to do very lightly. I think you could do that though. Now you could mix your media. You can mix your charcoals uh, with your watercolor. Uh, I've seen, uh, there was a lady I was taking a class with that uh, liked to use um, the watercolor uh, pencils. And sometimes she wouldn't uh, put the water on the pencil. So it was pencil, colored pencils and, and watercolor. And oh, wow. you can do a lot of different kinds of things with that. Cool. Any other questions in the chat room there that we can? Uh... I, it, I think that we can't uh, necessarily, can you guys see butterfly one and butterfly two? No, I can't. Okay, I will email them to everybody. That's good. You can Dorothy, go on. I need to get you your, uh, you know, why don't you do, Dorothy, why don't you check and see if your neighbor has them? And if not, we'll, uh, we'll get you a new set out. All right, so what's our homework, John? Get your butterfly on the piece of paper. Okay. And to finish up or try another sunset or sunrise, I'd, I'd like to start the class next week by seeing what we've done. And uh, like I said, if you have it on there, then I think it'd be a good idea if we visited with each one, if you had specific questions. Okay, sounds good. All right, and, anybody else got questions for John? And I'll work on my purple butterfly. Yay. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, ladies.